How do aircraft carriers avoid sinking when they go head-to-head -head with monstrous waves? Have you ever wondered how the unpredictable forces of Mother Nature have impacted naval operations? The weather has always been a decisive influence in military campaigns, even in the modern era. When at sea, the danger of bad weather is even more pronounced than it would be on solid land. Many military operations have met dangerous, even fatal, ends at the hands of Mother Nature. The most recent of these incidents happened in 2022 in the Gulf of Thailand. The HTMS Sokothai capsized and sank during a storm that hit during an operation. High winds and monstrous 10-foot waves caused seawater to flow into the warship, flooding the ship. The engines failed and the pumps became unusable. Sokothai continued to take on water until eventually the high seas took the Ratanakosin-class vessel. 106 sailors were on board the ship, 29 of which perished. In the history of the United States, 39 ships have been lost during similar episodes. 1949, however, was the last weather incident that involved any fatalities, which begs the question, what changed? More importantly, why have we never heard of monster waves sinking even the largest aircraft carriers? The natural brutality of Mother Nature knows no bounds. On the open oceans, weather conditions are far more unpredictable and dangerous than those seen in shallower waters. Hurricanes or typhoons can create waves up to 300 feet high and swallow smaller ships whole. The tremendous kinetic energy brought on by these waves can disrupt a vessel's movement and capsize it. Even if the ship stays afloat, the rocking force of the waves can move heavy machinery inside and injure sailors. Before the advances of modern technology, vessels were often at the mercy of Mother Nature herself. With the coming of steam engines, ships were built to have better defenses against high winds. By the turn of the 20th century, things began to noticeably change for the better. Weather prediction for one got more accurate and radio communications began to take off. While there were still catastrophic accidents, ships were better protected with the new lines of communication. Being able to predict a new storm cell and allowing that information to be carried across hundreds of miles potentially saved thousands of lives. Ground observers, aircraft patrols, and weather warnings were introduced during World War II, giving an extra step of defense against unpredictable nature. Danger, as sudden as it can be, can be deterred through technological advances such as these. In December 1944, a tragic incident took the lives of 790 sailors. A Pacific fleet was assisting operations in the Philippines when a typhoon struck the area. Three destroyers capsized and another nine ships were damaged. Despite the warnings and predictions, the change in the atmosphere was too sudden for the ships to flee. Today's ships are far better protected than early sailors would ever believe. The largest security measures the military has adopted are satellite imagery, radar mapping, and an upscale of communications. The U.S. Navy receives timely weather information from eight meteorology and oceanography centers in the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. As the weather changes, these centers provide continuous and instant updates. In addition, ship crews can also link up with weather satellites that monitor clouds, currents, water temperature, air temperature, ice, dust, and more. These are all factors that have to be taken into account when attempting to predict the weather. U.S. Navy and Allied ships have much more advanced warning of incoming severe weather events and the knowledge of how to avoid them. Weather buoys are a ship's second line of defense against adverse natural episodes. Currently, the U.S. Navy has deployed over 1,000 weather buoys into the ocean. They act as beacons, relaying information about local atmospheric pressure and air and water temperatures back to U.S. Navy vessels. Tropical cyclones form in areas of low pressure and high water temperatures. By understanding this formula for disaster and tracking the changes, Navy ships can steer clear of these locations. Avoidance is the best safety measure anyone can offer. Nature can change with the flap of a butterfly wing. So what happens when a vessel can't get away? More importantly, can the monster waves sink an aircraft carrier? For example, the Nimitz-class aircraft carrier is 134 feet wide at its widest point at the waterline. This width prevents the waves below from tipping the ship over. While the Nimitz class is the largest aircraft carrier in the world, all carriers have a similar design in mind. An aircraft carrier's center of buoyancy is far higher than its center of gravity. Buoyancy is derived from the carriers being less dense than the water around them. 
several of the individual components that are used to create the carrier, such as steel deck plating, are far more dense than water. But when combined with other pieces and components, they form hollow spaces inside a ship that allow it to stay afloat. Aircraft carriers are designed in such a way that the buoyant force is concentrated at a higher point than its center of gravity. Should a carrier begin to tip over, its center of gravity rises farther out of the water, requiring more force to continue the motion. With this principle, the carrier works harder to right itself the farther it tips. In spite of the odd shapes or angles, aircraft carriers strictly adhere to this principle, making them inherently stable. Don't let the narrow edges fool you, either. You may notice that aircraft carriers taper into narrow edges, slicing the water line with each dip. But when a ship is pulled into a dry dock, you'll notice that the narrowing edges only extend to the water line. This design helps reduce drag at the surface of the water. But beneath the surface, aircraft carriers have wide, flat bottoms. Theoretically speaking, hurricanes or typhoons still have the ability to sink an aircraft carrier just as it does any other maritime vessel. It's just much harder to do so than before. Dozens of aircraft carriers have braved such storms before and come out on the other side. Certain protocols have to be taken, such as offloading any aircraft, securing the flight deck, and more, before the carrier encounters the storm. But between the unyielding attention to weather conditions and expert engineering, it's nearly impossible for an aircraft carrier to capsize. Knowing this, would you risk going out on an aircraft carrier in rough seas? What is life like on these massive ships? If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. Until next time.